What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of RimWorld. Now we are still looking at automations or trying to do as many automations as we can. The Killbox 3.0 is doing great. The automations from it, picking up the resources is also working nicely. To set up an automation, so to speak, with the assemblers, you need to use the assembler data banks. And I've showed that previously, but we can look at it again. So put it next to the machine you want it to learn from. If the 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 original machine is within the yellow, uh, sorry, the white circle, but uh, it looks almost a circle, maybe a square. Anyway, it will work. And then you just click the learn the ability and wait for it to learn it. As soon as you then move it around using the uninstall reinstall button, you can then put that next to an assembler and it will work. Remember though that it will take the amount of time it takes to learn something is the amount of work it takes to make that said something. So if it is something end game where it takes 4000 work, you will have to wait a very long time for it to learn it. And then of course the machines thereafter. Just going through because there's a lot of things I can learn because it's got three crafting facilities within its range. But as soon as you've done that, you can then move it to assembler, give it the resources it requires, and off you go. Met cluster landed with a dynamo, which is scramming our reactor automatically, which is good. And the same place, of course, is going to... That's great. So we have had a dynamo now hit us, which means we have got no power and we've got a wave coming in in 12 hours. So this wave is likely going to be just my duplicates. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Uh, it disappeared. I didn't do it. I didn't send anyone. I don't understand why it disappeared after nine hours. There is the whole uh, wars battles, so could someone else of, and by someone else I mean another faction have gone and attacked it? I don't think that's a thing. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I'm not sure. Answers on a postcard. If you know, let me know. You saw it came up. It's a dynamo. It was a quest event. The quest event has vanished. I didn't get any completion or failures, notifications. I can't see it in the quest log at all. Um, so I'm not sure where it went. But nevertheless, we are at uh, wave 48. So obviously with power, it's going to be much simpler. You would hope. Yep. Uh, that's 50 of them gone with our first barrage of six auto mortars. Also in the background, uh, some completion there. Step completed on Arimatronics research. So we can wait for more mortars to hit these. If they're not going to attack... I did look for a mod or a setting to make it so they don't do this. Uh, I can't find one. So if you know of one or are able to do it, let me know or what the setting is. I don't want them to wait. I'd, it's harder if they just instantly attack as well. Uh, because doing this means that mortars are really powerful. If they didn't do this, the mortars would be a bit useless. So if anybody knows a mod that makes it so they do attack, uh, please let me know. There is a mod that makes them not go to the same place. So if you mortar them, they move to another place. But then they'll just stay there and get mortared anyway. So yeah, it makes no sense. And there is the additional barrage of six mortars. They hit quite nicely. At least three of those hit him in the center. And that was enough. 212. Wait, that math doesn't make sense. 212 out of 214 were killed. But yet there's still about 50 running off. So someone's lying to someone. And I'm not entirely sure I know where. Now, to pick up all this junk easily and quickly, we can extend that like so. Again, uses more power. Uh, but then if we unpause, you will see those goods flying into the storage. Of course, they're going to be auto-sorted. Most of it is weapons. Weapons and armor if they're not using the death acidifiers. But yeah, that's all the weapons there. And then some drugs and some alcohol as well. Some joints. 
beer, medicine, ambrosia, and wood with a horn. Yeah, but as you can see, mostly weapons. Uh, likely, all of those sniper rifles will be bio-coded as well. We need a way of scrapping those. Smelting them down will be good for the resources, but it's very, very slow. So I would rather just bin them. That is a lot of injured people. Again, I still don't understand how we only left two alive, or at least three alive, according to that number. But yeah, I saw at least 30 leave the map. Hmm. There is also a problem with the corpses, too many of, and of course, any of your colonists going into a graveyard that looks like that. There must be 200 corpses there. You're going to give them a mood debuff that you're never going to see the end of. So if we can automate cremating them, and of course you can see that's already running, that's great. Now cremating them, of course, will give us the close, which is a whole nother problem to work out. That's annoying. Yeah, so we're going to have to burn cloves as well, I think. It's pretty quick, though. It's running pretty well. I mean, it's storing the cloves, so at the minute it's running as it should, but it will back up to 100 and then stop. Simple solution to that is shut down another furnace, another, yeah, another furnace that will destroy them. So once it's set up, the through wall put there I've got will push the clothing only into the smaller building that will then destroy all armors uh, clothes apparel basically uh, and yes destroy because if we try and recycle it it's just too slow and resource wise all you're gonna do is end up with massive delays a lot more lag in the game and you'll end up with like maybe 50,000 cotton that will make you a load of silver but it will take forever to do it and you will have to suffer the consequences in the meantime. I'd rather just bin it. When we've got waves of 200, 300, 400, maybe more, uh, it's better to not bother IMO. This machine here is actually recycling, as you can see, and there's all those fabrics there. That one's not too bad, but the one coming from the graveyard is problematic at best. We are obviously in the midst of wave 50, so 49 was clearly not very eventful at all. 50 is coming in with 251 people. 251 people uh, can be mortared if they don't attack immediately. We have to wait and see on that one. It was misleading when it first loaded in because you saw there was a small circle there. But that means they're clustered and that means them two, three, four, five mortar hits were magnificent. Yeah, that was a fantastic mortar flurry. Look at that. 180 people killed uh, on that first flurry of mortars and the remainders are not looking great. Their helves are around 50%. I don't imagine they're going to last very long coming into this kill box. Uh, the, them getting even near to our colonists is unlikely at best. Obviously, you've got these rogue ones that keep going off uh, to destroy something else and they do annoy me a lot. So they do actually technically win a little bit, maybe. Uh, because they never actually get killed, so don't send anybody after them. But keep damaging that is expensive. So it is expensive on resources to make and repair or even rebuild in this instance. Rebuild those uh, machines. As you can see, I'm putting it in there. And all the, the items that you need for it are, are significant. But as it stands, um, it's... Yeah, I don't, I don't imagine we're going to have too many issues here. It is a boss wave. Level 50, of course. Every five waves is a boss wave. The boss side of it, though, just gave us a boost in people because it was like, I don't know, 218, 220 for the previous ones, and it's an extra 30 people, and they've got uh, buffs. They're also fire breathers, so if they get within range of us, we're going to be in a whole world of pain. Our colonists, not so much the buildings because they're metal and don't burn. And there we go. Oh, look at that background. Woo. That's terrifying all the corpses all the dead bodies legendary reward there for survival means we're going to take that so you get foods and the like and wave 51 in another five days of course we are now into wave 50 so the incremental damage and the stats uh, all increase as long as the points 
allowed for Winston waves to use to attack me which should mean that the waves themselves should grow in size to the point that it starts to lag and then I will use the compression mod to reduce the amount of people but silly increase the stats of the people and make them very very powerful indeed okay so into wave 52 and I've brought you back for this one because it's quite uh, what's the word squeaky so you can see they've all got these OP shields and the shields themselves are very good at protecting them from an attack which means the singular singular mortar attacks aren't really doing anything because it breaks the shields and the mortars don't have chance to fire again before the shields are recharged so we aren't relying on the mortars my colonists aren't there and i'll be honest i can't remember why i didn't send them i assume it's probably because i thought i'd be fine um and at this stage i'm thinking oh shite i they're getting too close the closest they've ever been before And they just continue to get closer. Just sped it up a little bit here because I'm sure you don't want to see it. It's a bit laggy um, due to the amount as well. I do then think, crap, start sending my guys in to help defend every single bullet counts. Uh, the obelisks are going crazy. I have upgraded them. I say upgraded. I have added an extra few. So we've now got six either side. So 12 total. Tesla's is not much point at this stage but then that happens yeah you saw it now this is scary because we've run out of power so we now have no teslas no obelisks all we have is our own people and the sniper turrets now they are so close to breaking through and there goes one starting to attack the obelisk now the obelisks sorry the teslas at this stage um are very valuable because they're so high level highly leveled up I can use all the abilities I've got. They've got these shields, and that's what made this so difficult. So we've drained through all of our power. We've used every single ability to deter them. But we did it. So we've just got them to retreat at exactly the time that we were about to lose, uh, I would say. Took the random legendary reward there, so we've got some legendary armors and weapons, random as they are. Uh, the flames there just to help deter the ones that were continuing to fight. Instead of just leaving the kill box, they'll try and do some damage. The fire there should help with that and burn anything that is unnecessarily required. Allowing my guys to go back to doing what they want. But yeah, so far I would say with the new kill box, that is the closest we've got. So the difficult raids I'm finding with my setup are the ones that come in with the shields, i.e. what you've just seen, and the ones that come in with the trait that allows them to resurrect once. So whatever that number raid is, 200 of them, you've obviously got to double that. They also don't retreat. And if you have a system like I've got where it auto puts the people into the cemetery... They die, it picks them up, they go through the pipes into the cemetery and then they resurrect and then they're attacking from inside my base, which is problematic. So I may need to put some turrets in the cemetery just in case that happens. That is a lot of stuffs. few waves later nothing interesting happened in those we managed to survive them you can see we have now got two marauders now we will see them in action shortly they are terrifying and they are painful uh, on the ears uh, luckily i say luckily it's not really luckily we don't have any in-game sound still this should be the last episode for that the episodes after this one will be back to the normal sound uh, i do apologize for that again my software likes to wind me up some barbed wire as a last resort just to slow them down that one extra line and at the minute i am doing what i said in the previous comment about piping in the people and it's not pipes it's conveyor belts the idea is that conveyor belts will then take the corpses automatically away but yes it will also take the ones that are going to resurrect away and we need to think about that the quarry is doing okay i'm not sure about what resources I require at the stages that I'm at because 
the things I'm building are doing fine without. One other thing is as well, them uh, obsession blocks from the golden cube are really getting on my nerves. They just keep chucking them everywhere. I'm going to have to just forget about them and let them put them down because it's becoming a chore just to remember to select them all, uninstall them all, and store them all. You can't destroy them or sell them because everybody goes into a murderous rage. So don't do that. Definitely don't do that. And I'm not going to say I did do it by accident and then regretted it and had to reload. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, but don't do that. So in the automation room now, in the crafting room, the the three at the bottom are explained like so. The one on the left is making chem fuel for mortars. The one in the middle is making the armors that I require and the helmets. And the one on the right is for rimatronics only. So all of the obelisks, teslas and marauders, they all have their own various different upgrades, which are actually quite cheap. You have to research them first. You've seen them with the beam splitters and things like that. And I've just told that machine to make them. So I've got, say, 12 uh, of the obelisk. So I'll make sure I make 12 of every type of upgrade for the obelisk. And then you set it to do the same for the Teslas, etc. Now, those machines there at the back are the storage vessels. And they are the very last in terms of research for your industrial craft. They store 750 stacks of goods and are digital, so they don't take up any space other than the 3x3 slot that they take. And you can then use the OP IO ports with them. And you can see one there in the middle of the screen, that square with the blue line means it's an import. So that means anybody that's collecting any resources around this local area can drop them into that port they'll go into storage they don't have to walk all the way over which is wonderful you can use them as export as well and you can see i'm using them on all of the automations now portable databases are again what you can use on the mines and break the game with them i refuse to do that these currently are set to main so you can see what's going to happen here switching them to output makes them go orange now you can ask them to pull goods from your main digital storage and use them accordingly you can see i'm using them on some of them already i'm just setting up these as we go so this one is to make the mortars so it requires chem fuel and steel i believe so one of them is going to output chem fuel and one of them is going to output steel. And as soon as that is activated, like so, the machine now picks up them resources, uses them, makes the mortars, puts them down, and continues to run. And that's all you need, right? And there you go. That is the first shell created. And that's going to continue to do that automatically now, forever, until it hits the number of shells that we have dedicated that we require. Also, instead of having a storage shelf there, I can just put one of those IO ports down as an export and it will export the shells so that whenever we've got any shells put into storage, which now is automated, fully automatic, it will then output them. And all you need then is for a robot or a colonist to just take them from that IO port and just put them into the mortar themselves, which are right next to it. And then as we end off the episode, you can see there the PPCs, loads more of them put in and an additional reactor built. It's not set up. Uh, the turbine is because we had to build the turbine blades. The reactor there is built but not set up. There is no controller for it and no wiring for it, so we'll do that. We are pushing now to two nuclear reactors to keep us running to make sure that we have mm, plenty of power. And it's not to have plenty of power stored. That's not the reason I'm going over the top with nuclear reactors. It's because of the kill box. The PPCs themselves drain as you use them. And very frequently, we use at least a half to three quarters of the power stored. The last ep the last one around rate wave 50 to 50 52, we actually ran out of power. So what needs to happen is you need to have excess power so that they charge silly fast. The power for the base isn't the issue. We will never run out of that. The power for the PPCs and in turn then your uh, kill box 
that is what is important and yet to see them in action but we will don't worry but we need to wait for the next episode so that we've had the all the sounds back and everything um but the marauders those two massive cannons they really use a crap ton of power but they are devastating on the enemy so we will see that in the next episode thank you very much for watching if you like the video please hit like any comments are welcome as always again thank you take care goodbye